lounging, son. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan. Back with me, my boy Marty Keen. What's up? Going to talk some more superhero comics. We've been talking Steel Streets. Uh, we're going to dip out of that for a little bit because this is tied in with that, with the superhero universe. So we're going to talk Shovel Man. Very excited to talk about this. I haven't read it since I first got it from you. So I reread it again. Steel Streets is more fresh in my mind. So like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't feel like I need to like, I can just like flip through it and remember. But right. this one I completely forgot. And so like now knowing all of Steel Streets and then going back, different experience for sure. I mean, this was my fourth comic I ever did. So nice. I'm still figuring things out. You know, I'm, I'm design wise, you know, I did the jab. I wanted it to be a manga. So the, the superhero comics um, idea was that every issue was a different genre. And that was my way of kind of stretching myself and uh, practicing as much as I could and as fast as I could. So what's the better way to learn? If I need to learn how to, yeah, you know, I want to stretch my drawing skills, I'm going to do completely different genres that I've known nothing about so that I can really get my, like put my teeth in, sink my teeth into it right away. And so I dove deep into the, into the uh, design process with the, you know, the Japanese and the all accurate. I had some, some Japanese friends. I was there. about to ask you. It's all, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. It's um at the top there. It's, it's uh, it says superhero comics presents, but in Japanese mm-hmm. uh, in shovel man, it's the dates. And then you have the, it's yen instead of uh, dollars. And then in the bubble, it says, uh, who is this mysterious figure? But in Japanese, in my crazy superhero mind, I wanted to pretend that there was a Japanese uh, issue, like a reissue of this comic. So that's mm-hmm. what this is. Yeah, I love the design of, of Showman too. And I always love snow. I think, yeah. talk, I think we talked about that probably so many times, but I love the, the effect that it gives on the Absolutely. cover. And it's a nice way for cartoonists to kind of give themselves a break a little bit. Because it's just instantly, if you put splatter and snow, it, it makes things, it's like makeup for, for art. It instantly makes things nice. I, I like that. It's like makeup for art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure so, I, I feel like somebody's going to comment on this video with it when they hear that line that you just said. Yes. I've, I've <laughs> never heard that before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's awesome. So you often, you, you know what? I want to ask you, the Originals Club. Yeah. You say that, you, you have that a lot right. in your books. What is that? The Originals Club was a thing my brother and I started back in 2016 it was basically a way it was a platform that we wanted to use to to help artists uh in a collaborative way to kind of get their stuff out there and i remember it was a platform for me to get my my music out and uh, all sorts of stuff and it just kind of stayed and when i started superhero comics i wanted to give a nod to it every time Mm -hmm. because you know you have the comics code authority and and marvel and dc i wanted the originals club to be that kind of the stamp of approval, originals approved, you know. That I like that. Yeah, so it's just kind of a little nod to a thing and, and a little inside inside joke. So crazy, dude! Two years. What? Twenty twenty two. What? Yeah, April twenty twenty two. So it's a year, a year old. A year old. Why am I thinking twenty twenty four? Yeah, you're time traveling. Man. I'm time traveling. I think it's. Yeah. <laughs> I I have to edit that out. I think it's because of me at the at IDW, like when we're like going over scheduling, we're already like talking 2025. So right, I'm right, like, right, oh, right. we're in 2024 right now. You know. <laughs> Anyways, I guess. Well, so, actually, funny enough, Steel Streets Five, which I think is the next one we're gonna do, that's February 2023. So we're gonna see a year of progress. Oh, Let's nice. Yeah, so I love this one too. Like I noticed a lot of like you were talking about a lot of manga influence in the design of some of the characters. Mm-hmm. Like the faces, like right here, yeah. is very fucking manga esque. That's all that's Golgo 13 and thick eyebrows. So we're in Hell's Bed in 86. Yeah. yeah. Same year as Steel Streets, right? 86? Same year as Steel Streets and same and just a couple months after Superhero the Beginning. We got to do superhero at the beginning too. It's, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it eventually. Because this one, I was still, I was trying to do the thing where you have one shots that connect all throughout. Mm-hmm. So the main guy in this one is Shovel Man, but there's going to be appearances by other characters of the from the superhero universe, which I established in the three previous uh, comics. Right. So we meet Kenji here, and he owns the Namba Cafe in Japan Town, Hell's Bed. Love it. And I wanted to do a Christmas issue too. That was also an impetus to this. Okay, that makes sense. Love this effect too. The glass right here. Mm. Snowing outside. Still. 
this is such yeah such pure a, manga yeah I, it's funny because i didn't remember that because I, I look i think when i first read them i read all i think i read three or four of them yeah i think it was maybe it was three but when we first were talking right and like mm-hmm. i but i knew that you were doing something like that where it was a different thing each time so i didn't really pay attention but i've gotten so used to your art you know a certain way so like now going back and looking at it it does look it looks different i mean it, it, you yeah. i see you in it obviously sure, sure. but mean, it's, it's weird to see this uh like this difference that you kind of like i mean yeah it's slightly more intentional mm-hmm. kind of going to a manga thing yeah yeah see down his fucking throat yeah <laughs> with those speed lines it's like such an intense moment i love this too like he's like yeah, <laughs> sitting there all frustrated, like sweat beads rolling down his well, face. Well, because I mean, he owns a restaurant, yeah. and he, you know, that any damage to anything, he just has to pay for it, and he has to pay for it with his sweat, blood, and tears. So he's he's just frustrated, mm-hmm. pissed at the yakuza, dude. Exactly, another stray bullet, another stray bullet, some it's classic so cartooning. Yeah, yeah, so good. And I think you you see, because I was still trying to, I was still figuring out my comic voice in terms of. You know storytelling and stuff i was you know trying to get some different kinds of shots in there always trying to make it a little cinematic but i yeah. think in my writing is where you kind of see the the connective thread sort of with uh, all my other stuff you know like yeah. i think what he calls him st- like rat and stuff like that you know he's kind of get the fuck out of here it's all these <laughs> you know, classic uh classic mighty keen poetry and yeah. yeah the son of a bitch guy was coming in yeah <laughs> This is you. This is classic you, dude. And oh, yeah. a cigarette. You know, oh, yeah. the way you draw a cigarette, whether they're taking a drag or they're, you know, the, the flick. Right. It's good stuff. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, I haven't smoked in years, but it's for some yeah. reason, like, I noticed that kind of stuff, you know? It's uh, the it's, way it, it's, it just bounces <laughs> off. Because what is that's just disrespectful. Yeah. Blowing smoke in someone's face is oof. Flicking a cigarette in someone's face. That's oh, my just God. Yeah. Rude. I think I've definitely tried to piss somebody off by blowing smoke in their face. You know, <laughs> when I was I was drunk one time, you know, and like I was trying to piss my friend. I was, I was like trying to start shit with him. Oh I just like God. I got it real close. <laughs> and I was, <laughs> and fucking dro- he dropped me to the he dropped me to the ground, dude. Yeah, I, was, I'm yeah, I deserved it. I deserved it. Yeah, yeah respect. But, yeah, yeah. As the story's going, you know, he's he. You can tell he was pushed to the limit. Yeah, it's great because you're showing this stuff like you showed it when he's just sitting there like, and frustrated with the like the sweat beads dropping down his face. You mm-hmm. see here as he's holding his shovel and yeah. his hand is just shaking. Feel the anger boiling up inside of him. Because you think, you know, you think he's just a restaurateur, like he owns his restaurant, that's it. But then you realize he has a past, yeah. you know, just as he's been pushed to the edge and we turn the page and he says, I still need to. <laughs> it made me laugh when I... I mean, shovel. Shovel. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> fucking chopping heads off, right, yeah, dude? This is such a fucking dope comic, dude. <laughs> I love this because I don't. I seriously was like reading it for the first time again. Yeah, because you know, because like I feel like that. You know, when you read a comic, you know, like or when you read a lot of comics on sure. a daily basis, so like there's not a day that goes by when I'm not reading, right? So like because of that like stuff starts to slowly like get out of my brain so when i go back and read it especially because it's been like it's gotta have been i would say at least a year For maybe sure. a little bit more since i've read this well um, i sent them to you so yeah this was this was definitely in the first one this is one of the first ones you sent me yeah i think i sent them to you after so you probably got the months a couple months after i made them yeah, so it's definitely been a while. And I, you know, and also reading, rereading things from artists that you've gotten to know, their work and everything, it hits differently, you know? It's like the first time you hear a song, you know, you like it, but yeah. then you hear it in five years after you've listened to it a couple of times or you know the other repertoire, you, have, you know, mm-hmm. you, kind of, you read it or you listen to it whatever, differently. Yeah, I think I think also probably, like you say, get to know, like, probably just from us talking so much too. It's like, sure. I, I hear more of your voice and stuff Right. Like I told you in Steel Streets, like I hear, I'll hear your voice when somebody says something. I hear the New York accent, you know? Because writing a comic, you you can't control, you can try, but you can't really control how people will read it. Right. You know, so you add your punctuation, you add your, 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 your sound effects and, you know, your, as many ellipses as you can, but you don't know how fast or how slow people read it. So sometimes, you know, emphasis on certain words or the way uh, tone is hard to convey. 
Mm-hmm. That's where you know TV and movie have a leg up on comics a little bit. But as but like you said, as you get to know the an author, then you then you sort of you get that cadence, you know. Yeah, for sure, dude. Kafump. Kafump, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even I don't know. <laughs> I'm fine with it. Have you ever heard a, a severed head hit snow? Kafump. Yeah. <laughs> And this, you know, I was try- also trying to get into quick storytelling in. Like, let's get into it as quickly as possible. Yeah, so, you get in very quickly here, too. And I think that that's definitely true with manga. Like, so yeah. you doing that with this makes a complete sense also. Because manga is very, you know, it's quick. Panel, panel, action. The good times bodega. And so <laughs> months have passed since they've met Z and Raul. And so they're, you know, they kind of have a buddy. It's like a, one of those silly buddy relationships. Look at face, dude. Yeah, I definitely want to talk. Uh, I want to talk Z. I want to talk that first book for sure, dude. So yes, yeah, so their dynamic is hilarious. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's really, but I, you know, and I and I definitely want to take it into a um a slightly, you know, as the series kind of progresses, it's always going to be funny and stuff. But I I do want to do a dark darker story with them too. I think it would be it would be nice to get a take where. You know they're kind of more grizzled. Like more months have passed. They've been vigilanteing. In I think issue six or seven of Steel Streets in the epilogue, there's a poster behind somebody where they dub Z the Vampire of Hell's Bed. So he's kind of gotten his uh, reputation, you know, as this kind of vigilante as he's been trying to take care of uh, Doctor Dread and the uh, radiation problem. I'm I'm nerding out on my own shit now. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm I gotta go back and look at it now because I didn't see that poster. I just love as he's jumping out. He says, "All right, Poppy, go kick some ass." <laughs> no, where did I pull all my bullets? And then you just flip it. Yeah, like, yeah, he just he's just jacked up. Yeah, to go. Yeah, Raul is the character. He's just a loose cannon. I mean, you'll see at the end of this issue. He's a, and then here I'm trying to squeeze in. Um, this is you know. Uh, growing pains of of writing comics as you try to kind of squeeze in, uh, remember different parts of the, of the other comics, and try to kind of give the narrative, bring the reader up to speed, sort of. You know, I also love you know we don't see this enough the the thought balloons. It's kind of taking yeah. that out of mainstream comics. I think comics in general you don't see it. I mean, if if I'm wrong, somebody please please tell right. me where you're no, seeing I've, them now. I've heard that too, which is, yeah. which is weird though because. I like seeing this as opposed to a bar at the top explaining the narrative. Like, I don't, I'd rather hear the thoughts of the character. I feel like it gives you more of an insight into the character, makes them feel a little bit more yeah. real, you know? Because we, I mean, we have an inner monologue. Some of us do, you know? Yeah. It's a, not an unnatural thing to have a thought balloon. I don't, I don't know. Do you know why they, they took him away? No, I just, what, I can't it? even remember when it stopped. I just know, I, was looking for it one day. I'm like, all right, let's see. Like, it's, it's not oh, really? I think somebody mentioned it to me or I just happened to notice it. And yeah, it's just gone. So 90s, maybe? Was that what? No, this yeah, I, have some, I have some McFarlane Spider-Man. I'm I think it was curious. still there. Huh? I think it was still in the 90s. What's that? I'm just I'm just curious. We can cut this out. But I'll just... Yeah, that's fine. Is that Spider-Man 16? It's, uh... no, it's, a, it's Spider-Man, I guess, number one. Oh, no. I thought I quickly saw the cover of what it was. The... Oh, six, right? Oh, six. Pop, yeah, pop six yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, the first one that McFarland did. Oh, you know what? He he just talks to himself. He does less thought balloons and more talking out loud. Yeah, That's which weird. is also cool. Hmm. Then you look crazy though. Huh? Then it's like you look kind of crazy because you're just sitting there talking to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Better to think to yourself and talk to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Tell yourself it's okay. Just don't interrupt yourself. That's, that's what they say. <laughs> All right, sorry. Back to Yeah, that's okay. So I love this post. This reminded me mm. of a panel of Ninja Turtles. Actually, I think it's a cover. Oh, really? I don't know if... Yeah, maybe it was in the back of your mind, but I, I think it's the second printing to uh, the Raphael one-shot with Casey Jones. I think mm, it's I think okay. it's either Casey or Raph standing on the roof, and it's this like long shot of the of the rooftop, and then just them. I, I oh. unless I'm remember, no, I'm pretty sure I'm I'm right with that. But I just that when we're going back through it, that panel reminded me of it. I mean, it's the vibe, you know, for yeah. sure. It's definitely that. 
I mean, he has three fingers and two toes, this guy. So. Love this, too. The gun's going off. Yeah, and then the kind of the red herring where you think that they're shooting at Z, but then you realize that there's someone else there. Shovel Man. That's so dope. <laughs> it's kind of you wouldn't see, think you wouldn't think somebody called Shovel Man would be cool to look at, but yeah, I dig it. Yeah, you do. You know what? I I you, have you done this in any other one? The speed lines? You don't? Um, not 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 right? like this. Yeah, I do some motion lines usually, but but not like this. Like in the no, background. I, yeah, I make it a little dirtier. I think in in other comics. You know, mm-hmm. this one was a lot more like ruled ruled out. And then we get the meeting, dude. Yeah. The legendary moment and i wanted that that panel on the right hand page the one the panel three with shovel man's eyes mm-hmm. i really wanted to do that that effect that in the movies when the like when the you know when it goes zoo, you know what i'm yeah. talking about like yeah, yeah. Wide, that kind of intense moment I yeah like white format uh, movie theater in that panel yeah it's really dope and then z is surprised by how fast and powerful this guy is is that the hyper radiated vigilante? Yeah, <laughs> it's just hilarious. He doesn't even care. He's like, be wise, walk away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he has nothing, you know. He has. Yeah, nothing. I like because I love. They're both like they're talking to each other, but they're also both having thoughts about the other one. So, like right here, Shovelman's like, pew, 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 like yeah. jumping up the side of the building. He's like, man, he's got moves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because I feel like we all do that as we're even talking, we're we're thinking, you know. Meanwhile, oof, it rolls, rolls crazy man. eye, dude. Look at that crazy ass, that wandering eye of his. Dude. That, that glass eye, <laughs> got it. Um, and he can't he can't help himself <laughs> on his scarf. <laughs> it's fucking tight. I'm ready to get down, bitch. Yeah, he's like he's just <laughs> this yeah. this too. The <laughs> he's just he's like let's do it, let's go. The beast. And then you can see, like, in my cartooning, I'm still trying to figure out angles and perspective and all these things. It's, it's I don't think it's that distracting, but it's not. I don't, I don't even yeah. notice, to be honest with you. I, I feel think, like that they they flow. It flows good. Sure, sure. The storytelling is there. Yeah. So but I don't the, think um, the exact. Ang- but I also don't really look for that, to be honest with you. I don't. I'm not. Yeah. I don't nitpick perspective. I'm like, oh, that doesn't make no, sense. Neither do you know? I. Neither do I. It's just, I guess, something you see when you look at a comic from a while ago. Well, a while for ago. you, for you, yeah, 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 you're looking back at yourself. Yeah, I get yeah. it. So I'm kind of like, oh, I wonder how I would do that now. Like the same kind of scene, but you know, a little differently. Mm-hmm. And then he just crashes into him. This is so good. Just <laughs> see a wheel, a shovel, and a helmet. <laughs> and ouch. And then we get the shovel man origin. Yeah, I like how you have the the balloons black with white lettering mm-hmm. on it. That's a nice sure. effect. And I wanted storytelling wise cuz you know, he just met these guys and he's already a little suspicious. So, can we trust him as a narrator? Mhm. That's, that's kind of the thing. He tells this story, it seems very, you know, tightly knit or whatever, but he changes subject really quick cuz he tells them his quick origin and then he goes, "Oh, but by the way, the yakuza are planning this tonight." So, who knows what is real and what is not? Because if you read Steel Streets, you might know something different. No, it's cool to get this angle of of the of the story having you know having seven issues of Steel Streets in the bank, learning that Kenji's got ties to that. You know, like it's awesome. and yeah, and and the panels, the panel on the left hand on the right hand page, panel three, uh, mm-hmm. that one I I I collaged into Steel Streets four four, I think Steel Streets four. To kind of uh, for the Easter eggs for the people that are diehard superheroes, you know. I think it's in, in the very in the beginning when they're talking about when the devil's talking to Kenji to shit. What's the bad guy's name? <laughs> yes, there it is, Koshiro. Koshiro, so get right there, dude. There you go. And that panel too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To kind of throw you into a. So if you know, you know. If you don't, then it's just you know, it's just a cool, cool drawing part of it. But then. And that and that's what's crazy is like this was like how long between that this was April twenty three, this is December twenty twenty two, so that's a little yeah. over a year and a half, uh, year and a half, right? Right, yeah. yeah. And you kind of because I mean, as you keep going, what why why I love the format of time jumping of not really having a linear uh, storytelling style is that I can look back and 
pick in the past from the future. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like this one takes place after a certain time, but I can I can take it and kind of you know take little elements from different stories that I've done um, that take place in the fifties or seventies or eighties or whatever, and kind of throw it in storytelling wise to kind of bring everything together. Yeah, which I guess is what they did. You know, Marvel and, and DC would kind of take different mythologies and you take little dangling threads of stories and and tie it in somehow. Yeah, they still do it. I mean, they'll, they'll yeah. still, yeah, they'll still like retroactively add some somebody in, like right. a new character. I mean, I off top, I'm thinking like Marvel, but like, yeah. you know, creating Cable, right? Sure. When when Lightfield created Cable, he was a mystery man. You didn't really know what his deal was, but then all of a sudden he's got ties, and his parents, his dad is Cyclops, mom's Jean, you know, like all that yeah. stuff. Or you got Deadpool retroactively being in the mix of like how wolverine was created and like exactly. I, I love that kind of stuff because then it's oh, like same, you yeah. go back and read stuff you read it differently absolutely absolutely and then here you're bringing in the well pool beans this is fucking dope yeah i wanted their, their tech to be kind of you know it's retro sci-fi sort of clunky 80s cars uh repurposed as a you know yeah spaceships kind of thing I also love the hand lettering here too. Oh, thanks. Man. It's funny. I'm so used to looking at your stuff with like the the duo tone effect. Right. I, I haven't read one of your books without it in a while. Well, so it's, um, it's weird to like go back and see it without, you know, not yeah, in a bad man. way, not in a bad way, but you know, no, it's, no. it's it's like getting so used to it, you know, in this, like look yeah. at the, the, the difference, you know what I mean? Like, sure. plus this book has no color at all, which it's full black and white. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drooly. I always like that. This the the swirling eyes or the swirl yeah. the swirl line when they're like great. dizzy or whatever. It's a great trope. Yeah, yeah. and the, you know, bringing in the aliens. I love just throwing them in in different parts of the stories so that you start to kind of recognize them in different different issues. And you're like, wait a second, is that who who are these people? Like what's what's actually going on here? Because I think the issue right before this one was tales from the cosmos or maybe that's right after i think mm -hmm. tales of the I th yeah because i think that was the one book i didn't have and then i had i went back and got it oh Cause cause I think, yeah Cause yeah because i had black and red i had the first one the superhero one and then i had this one and then like when i was right. going through stuff i'm like oh shit i'm missing yeah you know what i did i did that one after this because i because i threw in the aliens in this one and then i wanted to explain them in tales from the cosmos Okay. Yeah, but retroactively. <laughs> yeah, I really fucking, I love this too. Like, you know, you're still getting, like, he abandoned the katana. Now he's got his shovel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we get the square off, the team up, dude. And the pan, the last panel on the on the right-hand page is a part where I, I started to feel like a like, like more of a cartoonist, you know? Because I realized well, you don't need to draw everything. You can just kind of allude to things. So yeah. if you look far away, yeah, it's a big crowd against two people. But up close, it's just, you know, it's splotches just dots just yeah. dots yeah what are they saying right here if they're just sound effects that little fly bugging me my bad okay. um so what are they is saying the sound effect or is that them yelling they're sound effects so i went on okay. a manga manga database and uh, i found these awesome sound effects where it's just kind of they're saying fight attack kill blah 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 boosh you know all these things and i remember that one shot on the on the right hand page uh, of z slicing the guy Mm -hmm. I had I, I couldn't figure out how to do that for, for a while like I kept trying to be up close to the sword whatever and then I remember DBZ and I uncovered some old DBZ drawings and I was like oh my god there was this one particular scene oh, I forgot his name it was in like Dragon Ball where he cuts um who's the the, the little fat dude do you, do you, are you familiar with DBZ at all very little well there was this this one guy who was a coward and he had a katana and okay. he, he I ran. Think I know who you're talking about. And Goku became the monkey, and he had to cut off the the um, the tail. And I just remembered that scene when I saw it as a kid. It was striking because the the way they did it, you know, the mm -hmm. cut of the tail and the meat inside, you could see it and everything. And that's what I referenced, I think, in that in that nice. shot. You can see like the fucking waist. Did you see this? Yeah. The <laughs> bottom of the spinal cord. Yeah. It was a dope shot. Dabbling, dabbling, and double page spreads. I think this might have been the first one I, I had done. Yeah, this is a great, great action scene. Them completely surrounded. 
Z with his sword and Shovel Man with his fucking bouncing bullets off the shovel. Back to back, yeah. Yeah. But then, and what I like about this is that Z, like Z knows what's about to happen because he's he's seen this before. <laughs> he's kind of like, uh, we should get out of here quick. Big Papa's cooking up something. <laughs> So, he owns a bodega, man. I just think it's like, look, I got the eggs off the griddle, the bread is toasting, and the butter soft, baby. <laughs> the egg and cheese is to go. <laughs> it's a New York staple. And that's just an explosion um, sound effect there. And then he does it. And then Z brings in a little, what the fuck, man? I'm trying to stop them from destroying their panties. Yeah, that's why I fucked them up, right? Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> and Shovel is just like, oh, God, who are these people? I love that they bow and respect to each other. Yeah. So now, you know, Z has a new ally. And I and I was very much thinking of, you know, how Marvel would have, I think I saw one time a, a map of New York where all the heroes were. So you had like the Ninja Turtles were, were downtown, you know, Hell's Kitchen was Daredevil, Queens was where Spider-Man was and all these things. And I was like, oh, that's a... That's a really cool idea. So you got one part of Hell's Bed where Z's taken over, then Japantown is Shovel Man's turf, you know, so he doesn't need to doesn't need to worry about that anymore. A lot of it is just emulating the things I enjoyed about comics and, and yeah, you know, modern day lore. And then planting the seed of the ETF for the next comic mm-hmm. rise of the ETF. No ads. There's no ads in here, right? There's no ads. Yeah. I didn't I didn't I didn't know I could do that yet. Yeah, it's it's fun. And again, I'm telling you, dude. Like going back and looking at the old stuff, I I'm like, wait, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I can't like, I'm like there's nothing, <laughs> nothing here for me, dude. This, this, um, it's not over. I Where's do like this though. I like this back page, and you got the little little bubble advertising the other books. Yeah, so that was my my uh, version of ads at that time. But for example, in the new book I'm putting out, Lost at Land, I I put ads again because so in the first issue of steel streets in the back i announce the superhero comics presents mm-hmm. as a reissuing so we uncovered basically the company we uncovered these comics uh from back in the day that we're reissuing and so we have all these new things and so basically what i'm going to do now is i'm going to have the ads and then going forward the superhero comics will also have ads and fun little things as well as if they were just kind of you know going oh yeah well Another dope comic by you. Always love talking comics with you and going through your, through your going through your books with you. Um, was- for everybody watching, make sure you go support, support Madi. Links are down below. You can pick up all his books on the website. Um, and uh, make sure you check out. I'm gonna have to start a playlist on here, but make sure you <laughs> check out all the stuff with you. My, I think there's like three interviews. This is probably like six or seven creator commentaries at this point um and we're not stopping so go check check out all that stuff pick up the books follow them on social media and uh yeah dude we'll do this again soon perfect